Hello, I'm Rex Fassfield, and that was me messing around with a single instance of my Qualcomm Hyperbeam. What happened is that someone suggested I have a go at making a simulation of a blaster beam, which, uh, of course, I'd never heard of. It turns out that it's a five and a half meter long 24 string bass instrument used by Craig Huxley to create sound effects for Star Trek movies and lots of other movies. All 24 strings are tuned in unison and to get various effects and pitch changes a huge slider is used and this can also be struck with an instrument or the uh, string one of the strings can be bowed and uh, it's an electric instrument with a guitar like electromagnetic pickup and uh, contact microphones now you can't buy one of these instruments if you want one you have to make your own and several people have and there are all sorts of variations on the theme so I decided not to use the uh, sim prefix since I'm not simulating a specific one but rather make my own version which is the Qualcomm Hyperbeam. The principle behind the plugin is that it uses 24 synthesizers one for each string and the synthesizers are tuned resonant delay lines. The strings as you would expect only make a noise when they are excited and I've provided seven different ways of exciting the strings. The so-called mallet is actually a burst of filtered noise and we can uh, adjust the uh, color of the noise and the attack and decay of the noise envelope. So I'll demonstrate that now. We can simulate bowing the instrument on one string by moving the little hand knob which applies to the other three methods as well. We can simulate brushing the strings with a drum brush. Craig Huxley's blaster beam doesn't use wound piano wires, but some people have made them considerably shorter and, and to get the very low frequencies needed they make use of wound piano wires so here we can simulate the scraping of one of these wires of course we can strum the strings uh, using the hand tool and we can set the hardness of the strumming device so this is what that sounds like
For these hand knobs and their associated settings, you might find it useful if you have a, a MIDI control service to assign these knobs to sliders in your DAW. Sometimes a player will strike the girder itself, which gives a, a sort of metallic clang and uh, excites the strings. Um, so for that, on the excitation mixer, which mixes the various levels from these devices, um, I'll turn the mallet down and the tube down so we just hear the girder. The huge tube that they use on the uh, on the strings to change the pitch and to um, add percussive effects can also be struck um, to excite the strings. And we have various controls to um, set the, the sound of the tube strike. provided three key switches if you click on that you can see that the C2 no 36 is mute D is the beam strike and E is the tube stroke and if I set the excitation mixer with these down so they're not exciting the strings and the direct up you can hear the effect we turn the mixer up the strings get excited according to the last pitch played and C mutes everything the pitch, of course, can be taken from the MIDI keyboard. And we have a simulated slider here. And if I turn up the slider to full, then we hear the sound of the metal slider going over the strings. Uh, and this changes the pitch, as does the pitch pen wheel and the modulation wheel. On the pitch panel, we have uh, a pitch envelope generator, which can be velocity sensitive. And we can all 
also set a, a glide time. So now I'll talk a little bit about the uh, delay line and its reflector parameters. We have two different types of uh, delay available which use different uh, interpolation methods and give uh, a different characteristic sound. So this is delay one. Delay two. This type of uh, resonant delay line uh, can have all harmonics included or just odd harmonics. The feedback control is uh, very important so I've made it bigger and slower uh, than the other knobs. Um, the amount of feedback will determine the sustain of the note. If you double click it you'll get a sustain which is extremely long but just below um, runaway oscillation. Now you can ride the feedback knob, uh, in which case it's a good idea to turn the limiter on. We can detune two groups of eight strings away from each other. So now I'll talk about the uh, reflectors. The reflector is essentially the feedback path um, which sustains the note and you can have various types of filter in that path to alter the uh, decay timbre change. I've provided five reflectors to give a range of possibilities and these dimmed knobs and controls will highlight appropriate to the reflector that you've selected. All the sounds you've heard so far have been on reflector 1 which doesn't have any filtration in the feedback path. So now I'll demo the, uh, the other four reflectors.
Now, for all the sounds you've heard so far, there's been no reverb added. Um, it's just the behaviour of the strings that sustain the sound and changes as it evolves. But if you turn on the reverb and set a long tail time and then uh, go to wet, you get some uh, very interesting sounds added to the tail. So that's an overview of the Qualcomm Hyperbeam for you. Um, there's lots more detail in the user guide, so have a look through that if you've got any questions and you want to learn a bit more about the plugin. Now I'm going to play you out with a selection of presets. It's a montage using uh, one instance for each sound. So until the next time. Bye.